Artwork, critiques, Photoshop files and reference sheets are all available on my Patreon. Well hello there guys and girls, my name's Mikey, welcome back to my room, it's time for another tutorial! And today I'm going to be showing you how to use some very basic shapes and a simple method to quickly draw younger and smaller framed anime and manga girls. Now this won't take too long as slimmer framed and younger characters do tend to have less curves to worry about building up and you can keep your building blocks much simpler because of that. But seeing as I am known for doing spicy fan art from time to time, it is worth mentioning as a disclaimer that we do indeed want our younger characters to be nicely designed and visually appealing for our own manga and anime at home, despite having less developed bodies, but please do not confuse that with trying to make children look sexy. That should be obvious, but you do have to kind of spell things out sometimes on the internet. So guys. If you want to follow along then just grab yourself a few sheets of super simple printer paper like I have here, laid down together on top of each other for a slightly uh, better drawing surface than a hard desk. I have a super cheap disposable mechanical pencil, the equivalent of a 2B pencil today, a scrap sheet of paper, optional, just to rest my hand on so that I don't smudge and foul up my own work as I go, and because we're going to be talking a bit more about the physical dimensions of a child character, I've got a cheeky ruler. This one today is shatter resistant, just in case that's going to help measuring things out. Now over time you will get very used to actually understanding proportions mostly just by eye so don't stress too much about it but I thought it wouldn't hurt if I just quickly go ahead and put some very simple guidelines onto today's page. Now I'm going to measure two centimeters from the top and just draw a very faint line across and again do not worry too much your own selves at home but this will just help as a very loose guide and the reason I'm doing this is because we're going to be talking about head heights. Now you might be familiar that most adult female characters might range in people's designs from being about six and a half, maybe up to eight head heights tall, which is absolutely fine. But with younger characters, there's actually going to be a smaller number of heads, so to speak, that would fit in the overall size of a character's body. So we're going to be working with characters that are going to be about five and a half head heights tall today in order to make them younger female children. And we'll use those basic shapes to loosely map out the body. So I'm going to go ahead and just so that it fits nicely on a sheet of paper, I'm just going to count up three centimeters, six centimeters, nine, testing my maths here, 12, 15, and then I'm going to go 16 and a half so that we've got five and a half head levels here and when it comes to these character designs when you've got this sort of scale you can kind of go almost halfway about two and a half head heights tall well very very loosely and again these guidelines are just super lightly here to help me draw more than one character next to each other at vaguely the same proportions I'm gonna very super lightly just like that uh, count down by two and a half head heights and split that off. This will roughly be where the hips or the very bottom of the bum line of our characters might sit. But other than that guys, we're just gonna dive straight in with some basic forms. So if we have a go at putting together a very young uh, adult, sorry, a very young female anime or manga character somewhere over on the left to begin with, I'm going to start with that basic building block of the head. I'm going to go ahead and draw a circle which will fill most but not all of that space. And I'm just going to build that up here. I'm going to work very roughly and very quickly, guys. So you might not get a super perfect art today. I do apologize, but it's mostly about just getting your ideas around the basic building blocks that we're using. And I've got a center line so that this character is looking off to the left. And I'm going to sweep down left from the cheek there so that it's level with the bottom of the circle before sweeping in vaguely towards the chin. And then because this head is on a tilt, I'm going to maybe just flatten out a bit before I sweep up to the side of the head like so, meaning that our brow line might be somewhere here, just like this, and I get a cheeky ear popping out of the side somewhere around here. Now I have done a much longer tutorial, guys, talking about the heads of characters, how to map the face at different angles and get that looking good, um, and we've sat there in a lot of detail in the last one, so there's a link somewhere on screen up there all about that, but today we're going to be going a bit quicker for you guys, a bit more digestible looking at the bodies. Now, um, when I do the head of a character, I like to then just have a very light, vague center line, and this just tells me about the weight of the character. As I draw down, I'm going to make sure that we're not too far to one side or the other of this line, so that the weight drops 
fairly evenly down onto the floor. We'll try to keep the poses relatively interesting if we can today. And I'm going to just come down a little bit for what will be the neckline of this character. And already with our much younger characters, our children, we're actually going very, very thin with the neck. We're going very underdeveloped with all the muscles and curves overall. But we are still going to put in a cheeky line for the shoulders somewhere around about here. And you can see I'm not making this very wide at all. And then another cheeky line around about the hips level that's also gonna do something similar. Again, it's not too wide on the children. And you'll notice that I've gone a little bit uneven. This shoulder line's a bit that way. And this hip line inversely is a little bit that way. And it's always nice to have these uh, contra posto, essentially, uh, contracting against each other to give nice balance and smooth form to your character designs. Obviously, we could go level and flat, but that tends to result in very flat and level characters, and sometimes it's nice to keep it interesting. So, with my character looking off to the left, I'm going to imagine a spine line that sweeps in a little bit, goes down past the C's into the lumbers before sweeping back out a little bit more, and I'm going to be using a very small oval shape to just lightly like this Describe this area, not too thick, not too fat. It's a bit like an egg that hangs off the neck. That's vaguely going to be our chest zone. And then another one which is sitting on its side, so to speak. This is a much flatter oval shape, and this is going to be the bucket area of the hips. It curves around the top, as I imagine this sort of rough shape, but it's very flat on the bottom as I sweep that shape in like so. And those are our main two kind of guiding zones. Here's our rib cage roughly, and here are our hips for the characters. Now, the way that I like to kind of just balance that out before I build in the center is put some circles for the shoulders. So we're gonna follow this line across here, and I'm gonna put a circle just on the far side there, and I'm gonna bring a circle on the near side here, something like so. Obviously I'm working much darker so that you guys can see clearly, but this would all be very, very light building blocks for me normally. And then I can sweep down from the top of this towards the center line, which again is off to the left of this character to be maybe our collarbones, maybe they sweep in there. That helps me understand the shape that I've got going of the shoulders just inside of there. And I could follow this center line down, imagining that the ribs and the shape of ribs stop there with a, another kind of arching shape and that they sweep down over the front to mean the main tummy area of our character. You can imagine a belly button's gonna sit about there before that sweeps right down to the middle of the body section. And I'm going to join this by not accentuating the curves. Very simple child's frame here. So we're just gonna come down on this side and pretty much just come in just a touch before sweeping back out to the curve there. And then on this side, because we're seeing a bit more of the side of the hips, I will just come from the back of this circle for the scapula and the shoulder area and the back. I'm gonna sweep in a little bit, but then I'm just gonna gently curve out again and just meet again in relatively straight lines I'm thinking about back over across that other hip. So there's our main body area, guys. And then I'm just going to be able to decide that, right, let's have one straight leg coming right down towards the center. That's where it's going to be hitting all that weight. And that allows me to think the next leg I'm gonna have bent and maybe this character's running or kind of stepping along. And I'm gonna have that around about halfway down of this bottom section. I'll let the leg drop to around about here, but it's probably gonna swing right back off behind our character like so. So let's start with this full leg firstly. I'm gonna go ahead and have a nice circle sitting above that halfway, halfway line for a knee. And I'm going to, from about here, just sweep a fair line down here and I'm just gonna let this line kind of just travel all the way to the bottom. And I'm gonna start out from this hip here. And I'm gonna just let a relatively straight line go all the way down here as well. I'm kind of making it point into a pin. This is just our rough guide, but also to help us understand we don't need to worry too much about too much detail. So maybe I'm just going to have the leg section relatively flat, just a little bit of curve at the front there before it goes to the knee. And then relatively flat and straight again until I hit this last little one half of a uh, head height section down here. And on the outside edge, I'm gonna just bring it in as a curve, just a touch in towards our knee circle. And then I'm going to let it just sweep out again, just for the calves, but not too much. I'm not going too wildly in and out of these shapes. I'm keeping the consistency of this leg size relatively uh, consistently tapered as we make our way down. Then another circle over here, to be the knee of the other leg. So I'm just going to 
give that some mass by sweeping down here. You can, of course, just imagine this whole section as a single cone shape or just a couple of cylinders together. And then as I follow that sweep back over here, I'm going to imagine a straight line is under there to around about there. And that this kind of shape is also just sweeping down into there. And then we've got the always difficult feet of our characters. I'll have these ones maybe wearing heels. So I'm going to do the old sweep downward curve for the top section of the foot. Then a cheeky circle that sits underneath everything. That's our heel down there doing all the work, taking most of the weight. And then the flattened front area of the foot. These are just shapes that you get very used to putting in as you kind of study shoes uh, as they are in, sorry, feet as they are in shoes over time. So don't worry too much like so. And then over here, I'm gonna do something very similar. I'm going to imagine we've got the heel of our character just over there, the sweep of the foot. Again, my disclaimer that this isn't gonna be perfect, something over here. And then let's just sweep out a little bit to show the top of the foot section there and the heel of a shoe somewhere down there. And then maybe on this side, we've got this arm going down. Uh, the front section of the arm will drop to the bottom length of the ribs. So I'm gonna go down to about here, just behind the character, and then imagine the hands coming up somewhere like so. And I'm gonna just make that relatively uniform and relatively thick. It does get a little bit thinner towards the wrist end, but I'll highlight that on the other um, arm in, such a in just a second. And I'm gonna have a paddle of a hand and we're gonna look slightly side onto this panel where I'm just going to basically say, this is the side where we've got the smaller fingers. Again, keep your design very simple. If you try to overwork the hands on your simpler characters, you're just gonna give yourself a headache. So I'm just gonna curl in these fingers very loosely, have one finger point up in a kind of bang, bang situation, and then have a thumb, do something similar. Just get that shape out of the way. Maybe we've got an eye of this character is just somewhere in here. You can see that the scale of the head is super cute compared to the size and overall scale of the body. Maybe they're gonna be winking, something like that, just to give you an idea of the playfulness. And then on this arm, starting from the circle that we've got for our shoulder again, I'm going to maybe just pop down and out a little bit more here, and then maybe just pop straight up there. And so again, I'm just gonna get a circle here where that joint is for our elbow, and that's actually just gonna be joined up to make this a straight cylinder situation, nice and easy. And then where we go up for the hand, another little flattened circle there. And I'm just gonna join that up again, just like this, and just like this. And then this one is gonna be waving. So let's have a very small paddle shape. That's the center part of the hand. I'm going to take off a section right about here, which is then going to be uh, for the thumb, just like so. And then the rest of the fingers are gonna sprout out of that section. So let's draw a line to guide me to where they're going. And I'm just gonna put in four little nubbins, basically. One, two, let's make the middle two hang out together. So it's two and three, and then smallest finger just off there for four. And then just a little bit of shape in there, just so you've got that as a guide. And basically, just like that, we end ourselves up with a very small framed character. So what you can do, depending on how much they're developing and how much they're growing, is you might just have a little bit of bump in the chest. Again, we're not talking about making it too sexy, but there might just be a bit of boob shape. That's just going to create a much more effeminate style for the character. And I'm working on the front center line area here. I'm just creating slight sort of bump shapes, just there and just there. I'm not trying to map out an entire rounded curve or anything like that. Just a little bit of bump to give it a bit of gender and a bit of form. And obviously you've got just the tuck lines where the hips themselves meet onto the main section of the thighs and all of that area. Okay, great. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that exact same method that I've just shown you here in a little bit of time lapse now, guys. I'm gonna just do that to build up two more characters here in two different poses firm up those lines and shapes just so that we've got lots of examples for you guys to work with at home and i'll see you right at the end
Okay there guys, so welcome back, and yeah, let's take a little bit of a look at what we've just been up to. So much like the actual building block process I've been using for this young anime character on the left, over here in the middle I've had someone coming a bit more directly towards us just so that we could get a feel for these different curve and shapes, especially in the torso. And after I build up this basic shape for the head and come down from the neck, you'll notice that I'm putting in a light line which is actually kind of indicating the curve of the spine. And that's a really great indicator to help you understand what's going on with the flow of the torso. I did it here, where we kind of swept down there, and I actually did it here as well, so a little bit straighter down the middle. And I understood that our character's body will be kind of going slightly off to the right as she sort of runs towards us. And that meant that the chest cavity area here, I was kind of just making that oval swing a little bit more off in the right hand direction as it went towards the bottom. And obviously I've got the sweep of the shoulders again, contraposto, ever so slightly balancing each other out with the sweep of the hips and bringing myself down. Um, again, with these younger characters and these less defined shapes, it's uh, much easier to go ahead and start getting the legs in. I essentially once again started off with a kind of a cone shape. I just made a triangle that swept down to a slightly thinner point where the foot is from almost the center of the torso area and out from the hips, swinging all the way down. And then halfway down there, I just had a circle to indicate the knee and then just kind of put some bump for the outside of the thigh and a little bit for the calf but not much at all. And then because this leg's coming towards us, I just had to foreshorten things, bring the knee up ever so slightly and swing that leg up and back so it gets lost behind us. But you can kind of imagine that if this surface is curving like a cylinder down here, making its way down there, then this surface is curving like a cylinder much more like this because it's now pointing slightly towards us. It's always nice to get an understanding of the mapping of your surfaces. It's gonna help you guys massively. And then of course, it seemed like a good idea to also describe this character from the back. So let's just slide right up over here. And then again, I've got just a character facing towards us. We've got some sort of nice stagey pose. Uh, the shoulders this time, this line is even more foreshortened, even uh, smaller. And then the hips again, also pretty small as well because we're seeing things relatively side on. There's a twist in the body here, so I had to think for myself, right, the spine line is coming down here, down the middle, and then hooking back around the lumbar region as it meets into the bottom. And then again with the legs, I've kept the flattest edge running down the front of the legs, something that you can always do with simple character designs if their leg is nice and straight. So this is the triangle shape you can probably still see here, just like that and another triangle or a pin shape, just coming straight down there. And again, just a bit of bump for the outside bits of the back of the, oh wait, what do I wanna call these areas? I've lost it for the muscle group. The muscle group of the back of the legs here, that good stretch you get, and then down over the calves and so on into the feet. And again, if you're kind of doing basic character designs, a little bit of a cheat that I personally always do, is I tend to always give the characters shoes. And that is because it saves me from having to draw feet and having to draw the toes. Um, we will do some tutorials in the future where we're going to take a look more at how to do different faces and different styles. We will look at more adult torsos, what you do for a curvy, voluptuous character who's very breasty and so on. Uh, we'll look at the legs in more details and eventually we'll have to learn to draw the dreaded feet as well. But I really did, in today's tutorial, just want to cover the basic building block shapes that you can use to draw a much younger and smaller framed character, just so that it goes hand in hand really with the uh, much cuter, younger face tutorial that we just had as well. So thank you very much for following along guys. Of course, you've probably been noticing that there's some names on screen and those are my patrons on Patreon, where basically in order to make free drawing tutorials for you guys here on YouTube, uh, actually I get supported by a load of other people over on Patreon and over there, you can download the tutorial work packs I've got. So if you want a copy of this very worksheet, it will be updated in the next pack release and you can grab this and all my other tutorial pictures just for a dollar. And there's other tiers where you get all sorts of different rewards as well. But a super quick shout out with that in mind to Akumu Arts, Joshua H, Tenton, Hamongchi L, Captain T Solar, Anthony C, Rider2KX, Michael P, Carlos R, Fabio, 
Jamie, Marissa, Sahaki, and Brendan J. Thank you very much for your support, guys. As for the rest of you, if you are curious, links, of course, at the end of this video and in the description below if you want to uh, just grab all that stuff to help you with your own character designs and get in the comment section below and let me know what would you like to learn next time around. Thank you so much again for watching, guys. I'll see you when I see you and take care.